Hello there, I am the Abyssal Drink here again for another episode of the of Disco Elysium as we explore a Doom commercial area. Look at them shadows. Whee! Okay, let's go through this dog. So we started off going through. We told Placence she's an absolute bitch of a mother. So we got Annette to go inside because it's cold out there. And now we're in the basement, apparently. Ooh, drugs. Healthy drugs. Let's see. Um, giant bear? What? Ice bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The door is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What? Is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light comes shines out from its mysterious belly door. Well, crack it open. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim! It's a fridge! Of course, just a giant ice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. Look inside the fridge. Wait, did I say that? No, I did this. Okay. Well, I'm confused. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revishol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. Examine one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. The paper still smells of vanilla and chocolate. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in the light. So, they trying to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? I know, says the lieutenant. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse... The bear is still costing them money to this day. Tenant points at the red snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Probably. Um. Oh, here's something over here. The wall collapsed. It's inaccessible now. Hmm. Central furnace. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? Looks like it. Looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and generally peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only dead rats. If there sounds like um, oof. If there sounds like there was a weird pause, there was. Um, I wanted to get me some some leftover steak. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure I already said that. Uh, look inside the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other near the smoke chamber upstairs. The echo is so prominent it's impossible to discern what the voices are saying or what's producing them. What are you doing? Lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. I'm hallucinating or maybe it's the entity. I hear the murderer of the hangman talking I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone upstairs. I'm clearly hallucinating. Wait, really? Lieutenant sounds concerned. 
Take your head out of the chimney, please. It's not safe. It feels safe to know that the lieutenant's got your back. Now, and always. Hmm. Let's see. Smear your hands with coal. Why not? A lush layer of coal now covers your skin, sinking into the wrinkles. Your hands look ancient. You feel the spirit of Ramut Karzai, ancient hero of Grodd, pulsing through you. All that's left is to cover your face with war paint. Hadramat Karzai, smear your cheeks black with coal. Uh, yes. Yes. We're going to express ourselves. Three dangerous stripes appear onto your cheeks, telling the story of your wild soul. What are you doing? I am the reincarnation of an ancient Ilmarin soul warrior. Nothing! Sorry, that was stupid. Um, I am a reincarnation, dammit. Please, wipe that, wipe your face clean, officer. Yes! These three stripes give you the strength in this dangerous realm. It would be foolish to remove them. We're exploring this dark place, and I need the protection my war paint affords. And this protects you? This is traditional war paint. It will grant me safe passage with the spirits that guard this place. It gives me confidence, and that's all that matters, Kim. Okay, so, go ahead. He stubbornly looks away from you and the furnace. Those voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Patience said it lives in a chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least, not the supernatural kind. Well... I'm a try, but I, I might fail. Yes! Something breaks loose in you. A mighty bellow echoes throughout the chimney depths. The chatter of tiny voices above suddenly cease. Then... You hear a woman's voice answer. You've awakened the entity! This is the police! Who's there? I summon the ghosts of this doomed commercial area. Answer me, spirit! Hello? Are you there? Speak to me! Fair enough. You hear a low rumble upstairs. The sound of a curtain being pulled aside. Lieutenant nods, then points upstairs. After you, officer. I'm not kicking it with my foot. I have a point now. Um, what to do? Do I have, do I have anything that I have, do I have any checks that are locked at the moment? Um, now I can see the entire bent. Yay. Uh, let's see, there's a Samar and butter. I could do that. I think, wait, these are, those on white are available, okay. Cargo container door, rhetoric impossible. Um, no, don't care about the doorbell. There's the mirror and there's the other mirror. All the other stuff is available. Okay. So, I'm going to do. Let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'm going to I'm going to bump up my um, hand-eye coordination and oh there's a reason for this um, I failed it the last time I tried to do it but this is there's a particular event that's going to happen that um i'm preparing for and hand-eye coordination will come in handy it's a hilarious event that i want to come true uh, it was funny fucking it up but 
I want to actually make it come true. Let's explore the rest of the uh, basement for now. An ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. If I was playing on hardcore difficulty, um, then I would be saving my points. I do have a hardcore game save, but um, I don't remember which save it was. Um, where ba basically it's uh, checks are a lot harder to do. So you have to be really smart about your points. And if you ever play this game and you want to try the hardcore mode, like any build can work as long as it's not like pure one, 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 because you can do that. Um, the um, best way to go about it is to obviously look through all of these different thoughts and to collect very specific ones. I'm not going to say which, uh, but collect very specific ones so that you can, you know, better move your way through the world. Um, and then also, like, only spend points when it's absolutely necessary. Like, don't spend a point before a check. Spend a point after you fail a white check. That way you'll... And value certain checks over other checks. Because some things are just side quests and other things are, like, very important to the story. Um, anyway, that's enough uh, tips and tricks for me. The flashlight casts a strange shadow. There's a hidden doorway here. Ooh. Go inside, you fool. Pipe. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some busted guns beneath the ceiling. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are we? Look, there's a hole in the wall. Now, where are we first? Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. He points up at the rifles under the ceiling. Must be an old weapons cache. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. No, you do the honors. No, I want to go in the strange hole. Your hand r reaches deep into darkness and spiderwebs rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Lieutenant steps closer, curious. Are these any good? Inspect the rifles. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine wood stock and better cosmetic order than the others. An old... Uh, I don't think I've done hand-eye coordination yet. Uh, see, if I didn't upgrade my hand-eye coordination, I wouldn't have this. So it was worth it for the right... <laughs> no one cares. Um, hand-eye coordination. Hmm. I have to... Give me like two seconds. Okay, I think I got it. An old bell macro of rifle. Revolutionary era. Prized for its reliability more than its accuracy. The rest are probably Bell Malgraves too. Just too damaged to be sure. Take it. You're a police officer. Police officers carry guns. This old Bell Bell Margrave looks okay. Lieutenant whistles as he admires the rifle. His hands are gleaming. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but... Still, a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean? A rifle here. It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Apparently. Okay, well we found rifles. That's neat. Um, hmm, bubble. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Ooh, loot. Loot, loot. Ah, more meds. And money. Real. Let's see. Ooh, coins. 
coin and a cellar window people's feet shuffling by on the street even though you don't really see anybody out and about in the game normally but you know you know whatever two cables are plugged into the breaker box the red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker hmm let's unplug this one an electric sizzle the room is slightly quieter now let's unplug the black cable too something close to you dies with the soft electric purr why did you do that it's black it's not like it's the red one because it's black the color <laughs> the colorable the color of a measurable cosmos I don't know why I unplugged it I do things without any reason <laughs> lieutenant raises his brows but doesn't say anything the electric distribution board now has one cable missing okay there's some loot more more loot more more loot Ooh, insane mesh tank top intercom wires running into the breaker box yes there's um ah uh, wait I don't even want obviously I'd rather have my shirt uh, what I do I need them and uh, eh. like true RP every true RPG you know you just change your clothes and that improves your stats for some reason as I said in a previous episode just taking off your pants and shoes allows you to be a better sneaky person which is hilarious uh, let's go upstairs it's a very weird game a very very weird game okay up to the shutters, up to the shutters, up, 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 uh, up to the shutters. They are now open. Oh, bubble. <laughs> this tray is full of dice. Colorful polyhedral dice. Hundreds of them. <laughs> the candy dispenser has been repurposed to contain thousands of dice. Hello, person. Hello, I'm Nia. A bird-like woman sits on a throne of tools, with emerald light shining through Did her head. Did you try knocking on my window? I must have missed you. I've been listening to my melias. She taps on her headphones. So what kind of die are you looking for? Could this be the malicious entity? Perhaps it's wise to go along with this masquerade for now. She's got a direct view to the backboard. You should interrogate her about the lynching. Oh, backboard. Fuck. <laughs> Backyard. <laughs> Hold on. What do you mean by Milius? Yes, a Milius is like a calling station. We need a two way radio to access one. That's why I have these. She pats the headphones on the table. Mostly, they just teach you to swear in different languages. But some of the stations can be quite interesting. I was so absorbed. I must have missed you knocking. You must have me confused with someone else. I haven't all knocked on your window. Then how did you get inside? By the south entrance? You know what? It doesn't even matter. What matters is that you're finally here. Let's talk dice. Did you have something specific in mind? Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, it's just... It's such a good... Is it a steak? It's not steak. I don't know what it is, but it's me. Why are you asking me about dice? I'm a novelty dice maker. Tell me the name of your role-playing system and I'll make the die you need. That's why you're here, yes? No. Role-playing games. You know, the one made by a fortress accent. Does that count? Sure. I like role-playing games and I need some dice. Maybe 
I'm not really sure why I'm here, honestly. No, I was looking for something else. Answers. I'm not interested in buying dice right now. I'm a police officer, and I need to ask some questions. Answers? How strange. These days people only come to me for dice and role-playing games. Whoops. I'm not sure how helpful I'll be, but go ahead and ask. The walls around her are covered with rows of precious stones and minerals. How did you become a dice maker? Uh, sure, why not? How did I become one? It was a business decision. I was a regular jeweler at first, but that's an unfocused field, with too much competition. Some of my friends were role players. They asked me to make some polyhedral dice out of cobalt. That was my first order. I grew it from there. Do you like role-playing games yourself? Understood. Not especially. I like working with rare materials and a steady pay, and role players as customers. They're nice people. She's thankful for the security they provide her. Um, what do you know about the man who was lynched behind the whirling in rags? Nothing really. I didn't know him. Who cares about the dead body? We might be dealing with a malignant entity here. Lieutenant looks at his notebook, then the woman under the large window. Your window looks directly onto the courtyard. You're saying you didn't see or hear anything unusual last Sunday evening? I'm sorry, Detective, but as you know, I usually have my headphones on when I'm working. It sets up most of the daily ruckus behind my windows. What do you mean by daily ruckus? And you never took your eyes off the work to look out the window? Do you often work Sunday nights? I see. Thank you for your answers. Well, there's always something going on in the whirling, in the whirling's backyard. She stops to try and come up with an example. During daytime, there are usually those kids, and lately I've been seeing a lot of drunk workers hanging about. Must be because of the strike. She looks up at the window. Pale light comes in. But I never saw anyone during that fateful Sunday night, I'm afraid. And you didn't take your eyes off work? I might have, she admits. But in this case, all I would have seen is my own reflection staring back from the darkness. It's really hard to make anything out in the yard when it's dark outside. Besides, I rarely get up to look out the window when I'm in the zone. You often work Sunday nights. It's an odd profession, making dice for people, but I like it. And I prefer doing this than sitting at home. Okay, she nods. Anything else, officer? Hey! Where are we, anyway? What is this place? We're inside the chimney of an old central furnace. It's strange, I know. She looks at the ruddy bricks that make up the walls. Even though they've been repainted, there are still signs of coal black soot here and there. But when I arrived here, all of the other rooms were taken, so I had to build myself a makeshift home. Besides, I don't really have to pay any rent here, so that's a plus. Patience was right. There's an entity living in the chimney. You should ask her about the curse. Creative. Lieutenant looks around the spacious room, its ceiling fading into shadows above. When she arrived here, there was no room anywhere else. She must have known the other businesses. I've heard this place is cursed. Did you know that people call it the Doom Commercial Area? I've heard the stories. She nods as the wind howls in from the furnace shaft above. But I don't think those stories are true. Wait, how do you explain what happened to all those companies then? Patience is the one who sent me. She's convinced that the place is swarming with malicious energies. It's just capitalism. She shrugs. We only hear about tales of success, so it's often surprising to realize how many ventures actually fail. Patience? The bookshop lady? She raises her brows. I've heard that her business is doing rather well. Have the energy spared her somehow? Actually, the bookstore isn't doing that well. There are hardly any customers, and she has to exploit her own daughter to keep the company going. The curse is just biding its time 
if one strikes again, sooner or later, everyone will fail. Even her. I don't know why the bookstore hasn't gone bankrupt yet. That's what I'm here to investigate. We have to keep going deep into the curse. Alright, but it's not just the bookstore that's still up and running. What about the whirling and rags? Some people say it's part of the building complex. Hold on! The whirling in the whirling is part of the Doom commercial area. Yes, but it's still a separate building. The measures energies can't reach there. No, the whirling isn't doing well either. His waitress just took off, and customers have trouble paying bills. You're right. The whirling doesn't really look like it's cursed. No, no, no. It's a separate place, so the energies can't reach it. And then there's me. She sighs, looking at her messy work table. All kinds of tools lie there scattered, from knives to carving files to wire cutters. I've been here for 14 years, selling novelty dice to role-playing enthusiasts. Not exactly a million real business idea, yet somehow I've survived despite the talk of malicious energies. Strange, isn't it? Patience thinks it's because you're the source of it, a malignant entity. It's because you're competent and dedicated to your craft. The curse doesn't affect people like you. The curse will get to you, have no doubt about it. It just doesn't care about earthly time frames. I'll be at first to admit there are many inconsistencies in this so-called curse. It's gonna get you. It will. The dice maker erupts in laughter. Is that what you think, officer? That the curse is real? Time has come to face the source. Fear not. But the forces of the universe are supporting you in this psychic quest. I think it still might be you that's causing this. Narrow your eyes very mysteriously. I'm starting to see that there is no curse. Only business decisions and natural market fluctuations. Honestly, I'm still not sure. This world is a puzzling place. She's clearly the entity. Hmm, so I'm the grand dragon in the cave. She seems mildly entertained by the suggestion. Might I ask what supports this claim? I yelled to summon the ghosts of the Doom commercial area, and you were the one who answered. There is something ghostly about you, ethereal even. You're the last man standing. You must be responsible. I don't have time for explanations, not amidst all those visions I'm getting. No, there's something ethereal about her. Ethereal? She throws her head back and laughs. Thank you, but I think it's just the lighting. No, it's the troubled color of her energetic vibrations. No, I mean it. Your energetic vibrations are off. I sense tragedies in your past, darling. Of course you do. She listens to your antics with a forbearing smile on her face. Show me a person in Martinez who doesn't have any tragedies in their past, and then we'll talk. If you ever find a way to explain all those inconsistencies in the curse, then let me know. She turns back to her work. Patience needs to hear about this. Perhaps if you combine your psychic energies, you'll make sense of the situation. Um, oof, shivers. That I don't have. Um, I think we should just leave. Leave the demon to her work and make our way back to Patience. Um, it's gonna be a little bit of a walk. So I'm gonna pause. I'll be back in like two seconds. Okay, I'm back. Lady. You're alive and well. Don't keep me waiting now. What's in there? In that dark sarcophagus? The dark sarcophagus. Yes, yes. How was it? It was a charnel house of failed business enterprises, leeching life energy from this bookstore. Honestly, I dump. Nothing to see there. Just heaps of garbage. Someone should let the sunshine hit. <laughs> Oof. My food wanted to interrupt me. I'm in no position to give out personal opinions. I knew it! 
A tremor runs through her. Oh, such horrors that have been thrust upon us. She shakes her head. But what else did you find? Did anything survive? No, of course not. Have you located the entity? I talked to the entity you told me about. Her name is Nia, and she's a novelty dice maker. A novelty dice maker? Her eyes widened. Well, spit it out. Why does she need the dice? For some kind of sorcery? Sometimes they use the ankle bones of sheep. She's not a sorceress or some malicious entity. She's a businesswoman like you. No, ma'am. I have felt her aura. She is not the one to blame for this curse. She may be involved, but I don't have a way to question the malignant entity further. Nah, she... We can keep going with this, but she's not the one. She looks perplexed. I don't understand. If it's not her, then where is the source of the doom? How did she explain the curse? She's squeezing on the pendant too tight. A drop of blood in her palm. Don't... Just don't say you don't have any answers yet. The uncertainty is killing her. You've come this far. You know how to end it. There is an entity behind the entity. She says there is no curse. Because there are too many inconsistencies. She said it's just capitalism. Bankruptcy is a quirk of economic system. Of our economic system. The source is in the taxidermist shop. He became involved in arts darker than taxidermy. And brought the void spirits down upon this place. Honestly, I don't have an answer yet. There are still leads to be followed. Like that strange radio computer thing. There is another entity. More malignant. Pulling the strings in Martinet. Perhaps in my travels, I will cross paths with it. Because this is so stupid, I have to go with it. It's so dumb. A third order presence. Yes. So let's go with the pendant. A great dark relief washes over her. I've heard of these tri-actors. In certain occult literature, there's too dark to do that's too dark to dwell on for too long. And definitely not in the presence of my daughter. She gestures for you to be silent. I understand everything, sir. Thank you for descending into the maelstrom. I will keep forward up here. Strengthen the wards, do my best. And if you happen upon the third entity in your travels... She performs an X-shaped cross on her chest. May the Lord be with you. Well, this has been absolutely educational. If we happen under third presence in our travels, we will certainly come back to tell you. Yes, the venture continues in other waters, darker waters. He turns to you. So we get out of here before the vortex collapses? Yes. <gasps> what? What? Where'd the girl go? She, she was right here. Uh... Oh, probably because it hit nine o'clock, right. So she went... Right, certain times, the people will go back inside. Okay. Then... Hmm. Well, at least she's not outside. And I don't need this light on anymore. So let's just put that away. But we will always keep the crowbar. Hello, what are you? This coin operated viewer has been banged up inoperable. Okay. Uh to Roundabout North and to Capside Apps, Martinez Pier. Better watch your mouth, Brownie boy. Hick. Well, someone's having a good time. Dad reads, broken window. Tibbs has windows. If you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you collect these bottles and sell them. Yeah, true. Hey, what's this? This coin-operated viewer is facing southwest. 
Its coin slot is full and fossilized bubblegum. A fossilized bubblegum running in the machine, permanently inaccessible. Poor little viewer. Vandalism. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Look inside. A thick layer graf of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word Unuk written on the other side with N and C scribbled backwards. Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and grays appears. Behind the water lies a coast studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Around a large wooden building, you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach and a smaller tent set upon the ice. Okay. A tent on ice, that sounds weird. Down the stairs. You hear distant squall of seabirds. Ooh, what is this? A bag? Oh my god. We have a bag now. I can collect things. I can now begin my hoboing adventures. Nothing I can't do. I'm the job for every man. That man needs to go home. He is drunk. Uh, cash? Cash money. Get paid. Get bitches. Listen, Bryce, I'll suck, sell a success. You can fix my shit. A splatter of bullet holes line the walls. The sight of bullet holes does something in you. Making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Look closer first. The fading marks are too degraded to draw any forensic conclusions. Just chips in the sandstone. They look pretty ancient. Kim, look! Bullet holes! Where? He looks around. Point chip in the wall. Someone has been shot! We're cops! We should solve it! There? He looks to the wall. Those are old. Oh, you mean like from the revolution? What do you mean, old? Yes, the ones that happened half a century ago? He blinks. Those bullets were fired during the revolution and do not warrant an investigation by officers of civil law. Okay, what can you tell me about this revolution? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? Fine. Might I begin? Wait. Jumpster diving? Wait, I already dumpster dived. Dumpster dove that one. Yay! Digging in the trash. This coin operated viewer is facing south. The, construct the instruction manual says to insert 25 centims and pull the handle while looking inside. Then use the focus knob to zoom if necessary. Okay? Your money disappears into the coin slot. A clunk, the ring of metal. Pull the handle look inside. The curtains on the display open. You lean in to catch the view. It's blurry. Different blues and greens. In the middle of the shimmer stands a drab gray shape. A ghost. Turn the knob to focus your vision. The lenses shift. The ghost sharpens into an inlet. An islet. Whatever. In the bay. In the ruins, a man-made structure is visible. A half-sunken sea fort. It's concrete, almost reconquered by nature. It looks as if it was abandoned quite some time ago. Nothing but a rotten tooth remains out of the anti-aircraft tower. A lonely birch tree grows out of it. Its leaves ripped from it by the winter wind. Hang in there, little one. There are ruins of some kind of building there. There's a hair sticking out of my microphone. The little brave birch tree seems to wave back in the wind. Really? I don't have the eyesight to make it out. The lieutenant takes off his glasses and cleans them. Well, if he can't see them... Tis a shame. Pick up. 
collect the bottles. I like bottles, don't you like bottles? Everybody likes bottles. Oh right, we should go find the um Wild Pines rep lady. Um Run you fool, run! Ooh, what is this? A lonely Cormorant surveys the sea, indifferent to your approach. Well, that's kind of rude. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Rue de Saint Gislain, roundabout north. Ah, I thought things were being weird. Capeside Apartments. Ooh, suggestion, but no half light. And what do I have now? I have a spirit de corpse and shivers. Well, I want that. Bubble. Inside the frame of a motorcycle in repair and the tools used to disassemble it. There's a girl up there. Did she spill the paint? That's paint, and not the blood of my the enemies? The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent, rushing down rude desperance. You wait and see. The girl stares at the sailboat by the pier. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth? Blood type? The last time I was tested for Hep C? We just want to know your name, little lady. No need to get defensive. Don't use that tone with me. I am the law. Let's start with your blood type and go from there. Hep, yeah. Where were you last tested? Just answer some questions, okay? Yes, let's start with the blood type, yeah, shall we? Go where? Accosting a minor? Hey. Maybe. Listen to your partner, pig man. Keep your grubby hooves off little old ladies. Despite the attitude, she puts the brush aside. You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? She nods disdainfully toward the woman performing maintenance on the boat docked next to the pier. Hatred? Disgust? It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. She hisses. That ozone whore. Someone's gotta keep an eye on her. Who is she? Probably the Wild Pines rep. We should talk to her. He nods in her direction. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions. You know, do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to the ozone. What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural. An arrow graffito visible from low orbit. She studies the wall, suddenly pensive. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So, you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffito? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff like Pigs go home and Mona was here. We rarely see pigs around here though, just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. Why are you so committed to defacing the building? This place is severely lacking in havoc. Not even the occasional trash can fire trash can fire to break up the tedium. I thought I'd mix it up, you know. Summon the forces of crime and social chaos with a wall sized invitation. I have an opinion on this. Wanna hear it? Yeah. I love public art. 
Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. I'm gonna have to stop you. This is hooliganism. Actually, I don't have an opinion. I lied. Nah, public art is great. I, I don't care. I didn't lie. Actually, no, I did lie. Lying is cool, I guess. She absentmindedly paints a red streak on her left cheek. Do you know anything about the recent murder? She wrinkles her nose. I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forge in someone else's shit. No sorters of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't here, we weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Undulate. You've got eyes on you. Well, wasn't that just bright and dandy? I love talking to the youth. It's a fun experience. Let's see. Looks like there was more construction here. Once, decades ago. Do 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 do. Drugs! The belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. Bottle. 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 Bubble. Docking reserve for residents of Rue de Saint Ghislain 338. 33A. Your room in the whirling isn't much bigger than this sloop. Or slope, whatever. Um. Hmm. Shadows on the water. Green plants under the calm surface. So, this episode is a tad, gonna be a tad bit shorter than others. Um. Talking to this woman takes quite a bit of time. And uh, I don't want to go very far over the hour mark, so I'm going to end the episode here. And I will see you next time. Yes, next time. <laughs> Fuck, I'm dumb. Bye. <laughs>